Good evening. It's a real pleasure for me to introduce and present the 2011 Coley Award for Distinguished Research in Tumor Immunology to two great uh, cancer immunologists, Dr. Phil Greenberg and Dr. Steve Rosenberg. Uh, as you've heard several times tonight, the idea that the body's immune system can be harnessed to conquer cancer has been a long-held dream of those working in the field of tumor immunology. Many strategies have been tried over the past several decades with, with varying amounts of success. There have been nonspecific treatments like BCG, a, a, a bacterial vaccine, which was really pioneered by Lloyd Old many years ago, which now is still the first-line treatment for superficial bladder cancer. Others have worked to develop passive immunotherapies that I'm sure you've all heard of that include monoclonal antibodies such as Herceptin, Avastin, Rituximab. Others, including uh, an extensive network of investigators supported by the CRI and the Cancer Vaccine Collaborative that you heard Nina Bordwash talk about a little bit in the, in the film, have focused on the development of therapeutic cancer vaccines that can train the body's immune system to recognize and attack specific kinds of cancer cells. Still others, including myself, have focused on strategies for blocking the inhibitory signals that limit immune responses and unleash the immune system to attack cancer cells. Phil and Steve, on the other hand, have pursued a completely different strategy called adoptive immunotherapy. In adoptive therapy of patients' immune cells, in the case of the therapy that they pioneered, their T cells, are taken from their bodies, grown to large numbers in the laboratory, although there's some changes lately that are making this easier. And anyway, they're then reinfused into patients where they attack tumors or virus-infected cells. It has been the decades of work pioneered by scientists such as Phil and Steve that is making remarkable advances in adoptive therapy uh, like this uh, possible today. Before going on to talk about Phil and Steve, I must say some words about Alex Pfeffer. Alex, who tragically died a year ago today, was the true conceptual pioneer of adoptive cellular therapy, a bona fide pioneer. He was Alex's work in the late 60s and early 70s that first showed that adoptive transfer of T cells in mice could rid them of established cancers and eventually laid the groundwork for the successes that we're seeing today of this new treatment strategy. Both Phil and Steve are originally from New York City and are practicing medical doctors and are being honored tonight for their power, uh, pioneering contributions to the development and application of adoptive T-cell therapy for the treatment of cancer. But that may be where their similarities end. Phil, who was an early protege of Alex Pfeffer, joined his lab as a postdoctoral trainee in 1976. He took painstaking and a methodical approach to develop adoptive therapy techniques with virus-specific T-cells, especially for cytomegalovirus, a virus that can be deadly to patients with weakened immune systems, such as those that have had bone marrow transplants to treat leukemia. The advantage of this approach that Phil took was that CMV was a well-characterized virus. Because of this, Phil, or Mr. T-cell, as he was called at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center, was able to develop precise molecular techniques that would allow him to measure, after the cells had been adoptively transferred, how many of the cells persisted from the body and for how long, essentially enabling them to see if the cells were really doing what they were supposed to do. After working to grow CMV-specific T cells outside of the body in numbers that would be therapeutically beneficial in the hundreds of millions, that is, in 1991, Phil treated his first patient because of the sophisticated techniques he employed, he was able to track the cells. And in early July, in July 1992, he reported that in the first three patients that he had treated, these patients did these cells did exactly what they were supposed to do. In patients whose immune systems were severely compromised following bone marrow transplantation, large and measurable numbers of these cells persisted for up to 12 weeks, and they retained their ability to kill virus-infected cells. None of these patients developed CMV-related melanoma in the critical period of the first 100 days after transplantation when the body's immune system is crippled. The treatment was successful. Since then, this work has been successfully translated into the treatment of cancer. In 2002, Phil reported that adoptive transfer of melanoma-specific killer T cells resulted in successful responses in eight out of 10 patients with metastatic disease that had stopped responding to other treatments. And in, 19, in 2008, Phil's own colleague and protege, Cassian Yee, who's with us tonight, who had worked with Phil in a 2002 study, showed that you could induce similar responses using adoptively transferred helper T cells, something that had not been shown before at all. 
Steve Rosenberg, on the other hand, in a career that we could, should be called audacious as well as daring, has dedicated his career, at least the recent parts of it, to adoptive immunotherapy. Seven years after he joined the National Cancer Institute in Bethesda, Maryland, as head of the surgery branch, a position he still holds today, in 1981, Steve launched his first clinical trial of adoptive therapy using cells called LAC cells that have been expanded in the laboratory. Since then, he has time and time again pushed the envelope in the clinic, working to develop even ever more sophisticated ways to use the patient's own T cells to conquer their cancers. By 1988, he showed that adoptive transfer of tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, tumor specific killer cells that had invaded the patient's tumors, could lead to rejection of metastatic melanoma cases in a large fraction of the patients that he succeeded in treating. Steve's methods, Steve's methods have become ever more sophisticated, especially in recognizing uh, ways in which to condition the patient's immune system prior to the transfer of these cells. Um, he's been able to report even more and more successes, culminating in reporting in, in this year um, a demonstration that adoptive transfer of cells that have been genetically engineered to attack the NYESO1 antigen, an antigen that's been extensively studied by members of the CRI Cancer Vaccine Collaborative, um, approximately 30% of the patients, but not by healthy T, show, T cells, uh, tissue, sorry. Um, could induce significant tumor regressions in patients with metastatic synovial sarcoma as well as melanoma. Adoptive transfer of T cells has been getting a lot of attention lately. You might remember a few weeks ago when the New York Times Science section featured a story on successive adoptive immunotherapy for chronic lymphocytic leukemia. This was conducted by researchers at the University of Pennsylvania, including Michael Kalos, a former CRI postdoctoral fellow who was trained in Phil Greenberg's laboratory, as well as Carl June, who will be presenting this work at our meeting tomorrow. Today, adoptive T cell therapy has genuinely come of age and is the focus of much excitement in the cancer immunotherapy community. And we have Phil and Steve to thank for their dedication, their persistence, and their vision in pioneering this therapeutic approach. For this work, to bring adoptive T cell therapy from its experimental foundations in the laboratory through proof of concept to its now successful application in the clinic as a treatment for cancer, it is my honor and pleasure to present the 2011 Cancer Research Institute William B. Coley Award for Distinguished Research in Tumor Immunology to Drs. Phil Greenberg and Steve Rosenberg. Phil, can I ask you to come up? Jim, thanks very much for that extensive uh, introduction, and particularly with my mother here tonight, I'm sure she really appreciated it. <clears throat> Um, it's a real honor to win this award, and, and I really want to thank the CRI for, for the award and for the opportunity to join this incredibly illustrious group of previous recipients of the Coley Award, including Jim himself. Now, there are a bunch of people I do need to take a few minutes here to, to thank, and one, is, as Jim alluded to, is Alex Pfeffer, who was my mentor. He actually taught me a lot about how to mentor people and give them the freedom to explore their own ideas and become independent and develop their own careers. He also promised me that if I, did, if I studied adoptive therapy, I'd have a successful career. I think he was right. I appreciate that. Um, I'd like to thank some of my, so many of the, of the postdocs I've had in my lab who have really been the people who have driven, driven the field in my lab for sure. And, and originally that includes people that, that uh, Jim mentioned, like Cassian Yee and Stan Riddell and Mike Jensen. And then subsequently, people like Lawrence Cooper and Michael Kalos and Chiara Bonini, and more recently, and he's here tonight, Ryan Teague uh, and Jurgen Kubal. And actually, there are two, I have two postdocs who are here tonight who are, again, CRI fellows, and I want to thank them for being here too, Ingen Stromnitz and Andrea Schiedinger. Uh, again, we've received enormous support throughout my whole career from the CRI, and I'm incredibly grateful for that. I do want to thank the patients who have allowed us to do these kinds of studies. This is an incredibly courageous thing on the part of patients to allow physicians to do, explore experimental therapies that are potentially risky and dangerous and uh, to do that uh, and allow us to learn and to try to advance the field. And that's been a remarkable experience having that relationship with patients. And in that regard, I would like to mention Laura Ziskin who is winning the, who is one of the recipients of the Grace Award tonight, uh, 
sadly posthumously, who we had the opportunity to, to meet and treat when she came to Seattle for, for therapy. And uh, besides her incredible courage and, and the joy that she, that she shared with all of us, um, she also taught us that we're not there yet. There's a lot more to do, and, and we'll remember that and, and try to move on. And then finally, I, I do want to thank uh, my family, some of whom were here tonight. Uh, my mother, who was an immigrant to the United States, who uh, was a very typical Jewish mother. Um, she, had, uh, she mastered the idea of unconditional love with conditions. <laughs> and one of those conditions was that I become her son, the doctor, and I think I did that. So I'm glad I could do that. My older sister who's here who said I needed to make sure that I said that I needed to thank her for not killing me while I was an adolescent. <laughs> and of course my wife who, uh, who is, uh, had the burden of raising, of taking care of our family and our household and giving me the opportunity to pursue my passion. And I'm incredibly grateful for that. So thank you. Okay, Steve, could I ask you to come up and receive your award? Well, on June 30th, 1974, I was in the last day of my surgical residency at the Peter Brown Brigham Hospital. And on July 1st, the next day, I was appointed chief of surgery at the National Cancer Institute, a position I've held for the last 37 years. And when I came to the NCI, I knew I was interested in, in immunology, and I surveyed the immunologic literature for about a year and a half before actually starting my own laboratory. And in surveying the immunologic literature, <clears throat> I was struck by two papers that had been written. This was at a time when tumor immunology was at the very periphery of acceptable immunologic basic studies. One of these papers was co-authored by Lloyd Old, who had used T cell transfer to an adoptive transfer to actually cause the partial regression of a transplantable murine uh, mouse sarcoma. And a second paper that uh, struck me as very important, was one that was written by Alex Pfeffer, who you've uh, heard about at the University of Washington. Alex was a pioneer in the development of these T-cell transfer approaches, and at the time that I began my work at the NCI, he had published a series of papers showing that T-cell transfer could actually successfully treat a mouse lymphoma. Uh, a series of papers that I then uh, followed, and a very prominent part of uh, those papers were played by Phil Greenberg, who made extraordinary discoveries in, uh, in mouse models that inspired me to pursue this uh, area of treatment in, uh, in patients. And so over the last uh, three decades, we've been working hard to develop approaches to take T cells from a patient identify those T cells that are capable of recognizing the cancer, expanding them to large numbers, and using them as a drug to treat patients. In a sense, we create a new drug for every patient because we take their own cells, educate them to recognize the cancer. And in our most recent uh, pilot studies, up to 40% of all patients with metastatic melanoma capable of receiving this treatment have undergone complete regressions of their cancer, a, patient we just, a paper we just published uh, this past year. More recently, we've worked on ways to genetically engineer normal T cells to recognize cancers, and this is an approach in the very infancy of its, uh, of its development. So in many ways, tonight, for me, represents a, a full circle from inspiration from Lloyd Old, inspiration from Alex Pfeffer and uh, Phil Greenberg, and a fellow surgeon, uh, Dr. Coley, who began this, uh, this entire field. 
So it's a circle that has come to fruition with this award. I'm deeply appreciative of, uh, of having received it and my, my very deep thanks to the Cancer Research Institute for giving me this, uh, this honor. Thank you very much.